Hi, I'm Batwing Tensei, and last year I challenged myself to draw every day. It's by far the biggest artistic project I've ever undertaken, and I'd like to share how it went, what I learned, and why I'm never doing something like this again. The journal I used is a Hobonichi Teko Cousin, which I really enjoyed using. I chose a journal specifically so each date was numbered, and so I knew there were enough pages for all the drawings to be in one book. I've had my eyes on Hobonichis for a while and thought this was the perfect opportunity to get one. I actually had no idea if it was going to be a good sketch journal or not, so I did look into what other artists have successfully used in them before getting started. The first thing I learned was that Copics were off the table, so I had to break out my old high school art supplies. I sketched each page with my favourite Uni Kurotoga pencils and Pilot Colour Eno LEDs. I'm a nuisance and import the LEDs from America because I haven't been able to find them in Australia, but I really love using them and it was fun to draw in a different colour each day. I used them in combination with Tombow brush pens, Derwent coloured pencils, Copic speaker glitter pens, and both glitter and metallic poskas. I somehow made it the entire year without a sharpener because every single one I've ever had went missing when I moved and I've not bothered to buy a new one. To be fair, I hadn't touched my coloured pencils since I was in high school, so most of them were still factory sharpened and completely fresh. I also decorated the pages with stickers and washi I've collected over the last 15-ish years. I've been attending conventions since I was a teenager, and now that I'm exhibiting at them, I've ended up with a lot of merch. I'll talk more about this later, but the artists and links to their profiles are in the description. Originally I was going to journal each day, but somewhere along the line that turned into drawing every day. As most of my projects do, it got completely out of hand and the scope expanded beyond my original intent, but I was determined to stick with it. I had some goals that I'll get into later, but more importantly there were a lot of reasons I wanted to put myself through a gauntlet like this. I tend to go through really extreme highs and lows with my art. The last huge project I did was at the end of 2020, which also began small and got completely out of control. I'd planned on doing my own kind of October-based art challenge, where instead of drawing every day, I'd draw 31 sketches at my own pace starting in September, with the intent of posting one a day in October. For some ungodly reason, I rendered the first sketch and it all went downhill from there, and in May the following year, I finished the last drawing. What was meant to take two months ended up taking nine. I stopped doing October-based art challenges after that. Since then, I've had extreme fluctuations in my motivation and willingness to draw. I'll either draw the most detailed, fully rendered scenes in batches over a few months, or do absolutely nothing for half a year. This was getting really unhealthy and inconvenient because at that point in my life, making art was my full-time job. I'd even studied business management and created my own business plan, but despite having everything planned out and no day job to work around, I still found myself struggling to draw throughout 2021 and 2022. Either way, at the end of 2022, after moving out of home and needing to make more money to support myself, I knew something had to be done. I was pretty excited at the beginning. I even decorated January's cover as soon as the journal arrived because I was so keen to get started. That was a few weeks before the start of 2023, and it took a lot of willpower not to draw the first page before January 1st. It will become extremely obvious that my time and patience for the project dips severely early on, but I was full of ideas at the beginning. I had the intent of drawing something that represented what I did each day, but this concept also went out the window almost immediately. I ended up needing to make a list with notes on why I drew what I did each day, and even then most of them are absolute nonsense. The decision to decorate each page came from my huge collection of unused stickers and washi, but I also wanted the journal to have a scrapbook-like feel to it. I also immediately lost patience for this and ended up decorating in batches, which took a lot of time and made a lot of mess. All the stickers and tape I jammed in here have doubled the size of the journal, and some of the stickers actually stopped the pages from sitting flat, but scrapbooking was one of my childhood hobbies, so it felt nice to break out the sticker collection and finally use it. It didn't help that I kept replenishing stickers and saying it was for the journal, a habit I continued until December. I had to take the journal with me basically everywhere for the entire year, which meant moving around a lot of stuff. When I was still decorating on the same day I'd drawn, I needed my stickers and washi on top of my drawing tools. I might want to use my 72 coloured pencils that still live in the huge tin they came in. 
The first time I tried to take everything with me, it needed its own bag and was an absolute nightmare. So I slowly started leaving pieces behind until all I was taking was the journal and my basic drawing tools. This was manageable, but still took up bag space on flights. This was one of the biggest nuisances because when I was traveling for conventions, the last thing I wanted to do was think about the journal, but it went with me to each day of the con in case it was quiet and I wanted to draw at the table. I often didn't, but I couldn't risk not having it, so I persevered. I had a few expectations at the beginning, one being that I would draw a huge variety of things depending on how I felt. I imagined I'd draw plants, animals, maybe buildings if I felt like it, but I ended up mostly drawing my characters. Humanoids are my comfort zone, and while I can draw other things, I never felt like pushing it with my daily drawing. That wasn't entirely the point anyway, but there were days I drew so fully within my comfort zone that I felt like I was wasting my time. Why bother putting in the effort to draw every day if I'm just going to sketch a tiny chibi of myself? One reason. Habit. If the only thing I got out of this project was breaking that pattern of highs and lows and building healthy drawing habits, I'd be happy. Now, drawing every day can be extremely unhealthy, but I'll cover that in more detail later. One of the main things that made the lows even worse was letting myself get away with not trying to get out of them. I'd just accept that I wasn't drawing that week and play games instead. At times this spread into my other work, restocking merchandise, prepping for conventions, commissions, the kind of things that will be issues if I don't act on them. It doesn't take any creative energy to do a stock take or set up my embroidery machine, but the general lack of motivation I had meant I couldn't get any work-related tasks started. This led to a lot of con crunch and unnecessary stress that could have been completely avoided. While the journal alone wouldn't help with my time management issues, it would help with pushing me to act on my responsibilities and not leave them until the last minute, which I did a lot with these pages. While I did want to see improvement in my art throughout the project, it became more about habit and the generation of ideas over pushing my skills. There were so many evenings where I'd be sitting in bed or in front of the TV having no idea what to draw, sometimes going hours without putting pen to paper. Those days were the hardest and were often when I was at a convention, had a big day at work, or just had a lot on. The last thing I wanted to do was go home and draw, but I knew if I didn't I'd lose tempo and that would lead to me giving up. I did actually miss two days, but two out of an entire year is a bigger achievement than I ever thought I'd manage. I did go back and draw on the following days, so each page has something on it, but the two in question are the 9th of June and the 27th of July. They were both convention weeks and in peak season, so at least I'm consistent. The one thing I didn't do was beat myself up over missing days, which is something I'm prone to doing when I make a mistake or something doesn't go exactly how I'd planned it. In both instances I realised the next morning that I'd forgotten and had a little grumble at myself, but ultimately kept moving. If I dwelled on forgetting the first page in June I'd never have finished the challenge, so experiencing that twice was actually a good thing for me. It helped me to deal with my expectations and plans being interrupted on a small scale with something that only impacted me, so instead of completely shutting down and stopping everything, I worked out a solution and kept moving. On days where I managed to draw early or before work, I found I was somewhat more productive, probably because I didn't have to think about the journal for the rest of the day, but also because I'd started work with something small and loose. I tend to just throw myself into the deep end of whatever I need to get done, so finishing something that didn't require much time or attention to detail helped with my sense of accomplishment for the day. Overall though, I ended up making less new merchandise and drawing fewer digital pieces than any other year I've been running my business. I think this was mostly due to two factors. I was heavily focused on maintaining stock of things I make myself, and I was putting a lot of effort into the journal. This is both a good and a bad thing. On one hand, it's good because I need to put a lot of time and energy into stock I make myself. At the beginning of 2023, I started making tote bags and had quite a bit of success with them, so if I'd introduced something else that matched them in sales, I'd likely end up having to prioritise one item over the other, 
while I would have liked to have finished some more new designs, and I do blame the journal for not getting more done, I did have a lot of other things happening with the business that I was able to direct time and energy into. While I think I would have been better doing the challenge in 2021 or 2022 to minimise disruptions to my life, 2023 wasn't a bad second choice. During the beginning and middle of the year, I was focused on setting up a joint online store with my bestie Mirao that we called Tensei X Mirao. Aside from learning how to build the website itself, we had to do a lot of compounding tasks that all require some level of creativity. Product photos, descriptions, graphics, marketing, etc. On a day I was working on the website, I certainly wasn't drawing, aside from the journal. On the other hand, the ideas I had for new merch were shoved to the side, so I barely had any new stickers or charms for conventions. In the time it took me to work out and draw my daily journal page, I could have gone to my merch ideas and finished a sticker or charm. The journal took over the space that merchandise previously occupied, and while I don't necessarily need to design new things, when looking back at what was a pretty rough year of conventions, a few new small ticket items would have been really nice. It's interesting looking at this retrospectively because at a lot of times throughout the year I felt like I should have been drawing anything else. I barely touched my Cintiq to the point that there was a layer of dust on it when I booted it up after months of sitting in the corner of my desk. I think I could count on one hand the amount of times I actually used it. There was even a day where I switched it on with the intent to draw, but didn't. I don't remember why I didn't end up drawing, but at that point I realised I was in another motivation dip. That was a strange place to be. My self-imposed challenge to draw every day was being challenged by my motivation cycle, but I hadn't realised what was happening until I had the chance to draw outside the journal. I don't remember exactly when this happened, but it stuck with me to this day, lingering in the back of my mind. Looking back through the pages, I can't see any extended low points reflected in what I was drawing. Only single days. This is huge for me, and I'm even starting to see the impact of that in 2024. After one week of being super motivated and getting tons done, I crashed and felt awful for a day. It took me a while to realise I'd basically burnt myself out because I'd never tried to do that much in a week outside of ConCrunch. This is where the second most important lesson I learned last year comes in. Pacing. It felt truly awful to force myself to draw on days where I had nothing to give. I'd dread having to open the journal because I knew I had no ideas or motivation and would just sit there staring at a blank page. Some days were much worse than others, but if the journal was in front of me, inevitably I'd think of something. Sometimes I'd go through my toy house and draw one of my characters at random, sometimes I'd just draw myself having a moment. There was something somewhat cathartic about externalising those emotions, but it wasn't the most enjoyable thing I've ever done. Because at the end of the day, I was forcing myself to draw. That's not good! That's not healthy! I think one thing I could have done for myself is preset a theme or character for each day, because that would take the work out of thinking of something from scratch. At the very least, I could have put a failsafe in place for those days, where I roll a dice and see which character it lands on. I've seen other artists using Hobonichis as art journals, and while I'm not sure if they're doing daily drawings as well, I did note that most of them have themes or topics. I did, for a split second, have the idea that if I ever did a challenge like this again, I'd draw a random Pokemon on each day. That way the topic is already decided and I can focus on drawing. I'd also be able to reference official art and screenshots from the shows if I really wasn't feeling it and needed more direction, or if I got Boswell and never wanted to draw again. I think there's merit to drawing challenges, as long as they're not damaging the artist. When I've done art challenges previously, I've made spreadsheets to plan out what I'm going to draw for each theme, even when I chose the themes myself. Spreadsheets might have been overkill, but having what I wanted to do planned out helped a lot. I don't think I could have planned out 365 drawings though, and it would have somewhat defeated the purpose of reigniting my creative motivation, even at the cost of hours of indecision. The best advice I can give anyone thinking of doing an art challenge, whether it's hourly comics or a month-long theme, it's to pace yourself. 
There's no harm in skipping a day or backlogging sketches, but there is harm in forcing yourself to draw when you're not feeling it or when you're at risk of hurting yourself. That includes both physically and mentally. Taking one day off is much healthier than risking possibly months of burnout or an RSI. My business mentor put a huge emphasis on work-life balance in her lessons and said that allowing ourselves time for fun and play is one of the best things we can do for ourselves. Allowing ourselves time to switch off and not think about work lets us reconnect with joy and replenish ourselves through the things we love to do. I really felt this in January 2024 after spending the last day of my holidays at the beach. When I got home, I felt fully energized in a way I haven't felt for years. But it had also been a while since I'd spent the day floating in the ocean. Truly one of my favorite things to do. I hadn't felt that ready to take on the year in a very long time and it put into perspective how much I do really need time away from my computer and phone. At home I usually recharge by playing games or watching long video essays, because I find it difficult to get out of the house, but I do think it's important for me to have more activities that don't involve sitting in front of a screen for long periods of time. To help with this, I've decided that in 2024 I'm going to get into baking. The idea of a hobby that involves following a preset recipe that doesn't require me to think of new ideas is really appealing, and I love desserts, so I'm going to improve my honestly pretty bad cooking skills by making treats. It's win-win, really. I don't have to think of new ideas for a while, and I get snacks. I was asked by a few people if I was continuing the challenge into 2024, and without hesitation, my answer was always no. I doubt I'll even do a month-long art challenge again, even if it comes with themes. It felt awful to push myself to think of ideas, and sometimes I felt pretty low about what I'd drawn. I even started to question if this journal was something I wanted to publicise. I had the idea to make a video about this before I'd even started drawing, but in the end I decided that it was important for me personally to show off my accomplishment. I needed to put my opinions of myself aside and accept that I was never going to create 365 masterpieces. As someone who struggles with perfectionism, I decided that the best thing I could do for myself is publish the pages, so I started posting them on Patreon in preparation for showing the entire thing publicly. I posted a few pages on my public accounts, but I so severely dropped the ball on my social media last year that I gave up pretty quickly. I think it was hugely a motivation thing, because I wasn't creating much outside the journal and there were only a few pages I wanted to show off. I could have posted every page, sure, but my perfectionism took over and I didn't want to put time into making a whole post on multiple platforms for a drawing I wasn't fully happy with. I don't think I could explain some of these pages if I tried, so it's probably for the best that only Patreon gets to see my rambling. I know social media loves consistency and I really shot myself in the foot last year, but this journal was an opportunity for me to break free of constantly thinking, is this good enough to post? Is this worth posting? About everything I make? And just draw for me. I started art as a hobby when I was a teenager who constantly drew in the margins of their schoolwork and learned from those library standard how to draw manga books. So over years of taking commissions and making merchandise, I think I lost some of the joy of just drawing. I don't want to be constantly thinking if a piece is going to get me followers or sell well. I want to be able to set work aside and just enjoy the process of making and finishing an artwork. I certainly achieved that with some of the more detailed pages in the journal, and I hope I can continue that in 2024. One major thing I did get out of this project was rediscovering the joy of making OCs. That might sound a little silly, but for the past few years I've mostly made new characters for my D&D campaigns. While that is extremely fun, they all have a specific function or a forest setting that somebody else has created. I love collaborative storytelling and sometimes the set races and backgrounds are fun to work with but it had been a while since I'd written a backstory without anyone else's input. This year I went back to my roots and made two self-indulgent Terraria OCs, Jackal and Reverie. These two have the most edgy, trope-filled backstories that were so fun to write. Along with Mira, I drew these three more than anything else last year. 
mostly because I was just having fun with them. It truly took me back to my early art days of drawing the same OCs over and over. I hadn't done writing like that since I was a teenager, so I reveled in creating their backstories and tying them into the world of Terraria. I could do a whole other video on my relationship with writing, but I am grateful that I was able to go back to a place I hadn't been to in a very long time. With all that said, I am proud of myself for making it through the entire year. To be completely honest, I didn't fully have faith in myself that I'd see it through, because a lot of the times when I try to maintain a project or momentum like this, it fizzles after a few months at most. I do really hope that I continue these habits into the future and that my cycles of motivation are much more manageable. That said, there is still a lot of effort I have to put into making sure these habits stick. For 2024, I bought another Hobonichi, but this time I'm using it to write down anything and everything I need. It's not a daily thing because the relief I felt on January 1st knowing I didn't have to open a single book that day was unrivaled. My plan is to have all my notes for the year in one place so I can go back and look at what I had planned and what I got done, which I think is a better representation of my year than looking at a drawing I did of myself having a moment and wondering what the hell was going through my head. At the time of writing this, it's mid-January 2024, and I'm happy to report that my motivation is at an all-time high. While I haven't quite got back into drawing yet, I have been working on other things and optimising my workflow so I have more time to draw at a comfortable pace. I'm hoping this allows me to have more fun with art rather than viewing my work as something to be profited off. I know that might seem counterintuitive given I've posted this on YouTube, but my channel isn't monetized, so I'm doing this purely because I want to. I've been feeling really good about my work and am looking forward to getting back into digital art and drawing some more detailed pieces. It'll also be nice to get back into making merchandise properly, because I have a lot of ideas that got left in the dust last year. I decided that December 31st was going to be a redraw of January 1st to show how far I've come, and I think it says a lot about my journey. I drew the first after watching New Year's fireworks with my friends and the last right before going to do the exact same thing. It felt pretty nice to bookend the year with the same drawing, but I also knew that once I'd decided to redraw page one that I was going to push myself. I feel more comfortable trying new things without agonising about getting everything perfect. Sure, my circles are wonky and the anatomy isn't the best, but perfection was never the point or the goal. What mattered is that I had fun and enjoyed the process and can look back on the drawings with pride of my accomplishment instead of worrying that I absolutely forgot his ears in both drawings. How did I do that twice? Thanks for coming on this journey with me. The credits for the stickers and washi I used throughout the journal are in the description. I would have put them in the video itself, but I've lost a lot of artists' names over the many years I've been doing conventions, so if you know any of the missing artists, please send me their social media or website so I can add their details. In some cases, I know which convention they came from, but they were gifts that didn't come with business cards, so I've put in as much information as I can to help track everyone down. If you'd like to see more of my work, my links are in the description too. As mentioned, there's photos of each page up on my Patreon, Tensei X Mirau. Originally, I was going to talk about each page individually, why I drew what I did and fun stories from the year, but I wrote the script up to October and it was 33 pages long. For reference, this one was six and a half. It also didn't leave much room for actually talking about the project and its impact on me, so I decided to go with this angle instead. If you do want me to make another video talking about each individual page, let me know. I think it'd be pretty fun, but it will take a while to put together, and will probably be the longest video I'll ever make. If I spoke about each page for 30 seconds, the video would be three hours long. Until next time, Take care.